What's up, Zach Oates here, author, entrepreneur, and customer relationship guru. Welcome to Give an Ovation, growth strategies for restaurants and retailers, where we find industry leaders to share their secrets to grow your business. This podcast is sponsored by Ovation, the actionable guest feedback tool that works on or off premise and is easy, real time, and actually drives revenue. Learn more at ovationup.com. Welcome to another edition of Give an Ovation. Uh, really excited to have Danny Klein with us today. Danny is the uh, director of digital content at Food News Media. He's the publisher of QSR and FSR magazines. He's a Brooklyn native, now living in North Carolina. And we are so excited, Danny, for you to be joining us today, especially with a special guest in the background. That is a cute looking dog. Oh, uh, well, thanks. She, uh, she appreciates it. So she, she looks like the dog from that car that like the fan you know the fan in yes the ears. yeah basset hound <laughs> yeah that's uh yeah, those that's ears, man. um well so so danny you are out there interviewing tons of people you're out there you know on on the beat every day looking at what's going on and i guess first of all let me just kind of talk really high level w what are you seeing out there what's what's going on in in today's craziness um, kind of a kind of a loaded question. There's a, I know. a lot of elements to that. <laughs> um, I think what we're starting to see, probably the main thing that you can point to right now is that what we're noticing at this point is that the current landscape of, of COVID is affecting different restaurant brands, you know, differently, you know, by the segment in very, very dramatic ways. I think early on, one of the, um, one of the themes was it was kind of this great uniform uh, impact that we were seeing, you know, whether you were a quick serve or a sit down chain, I mean, sit down chains always kind of got the brunt of things, but it was a major disruption for pretty much everyone in those early days, because a lot of people just pretty much closed the doors of their house, went to the grocery store, you know, got two, three weeks of food and stopped going to restaurants, you know, so yeah, yeah. But things have changed a lot, you know, in the last couple months. And so you're starting to see certain brands emerge, you know, and, and kind of, you know, in some ways, even better shape, you know, than they were pre pandemic. And there, there are a lot of reasons for reasons for that. Probably the main one being that simply there are fewer restaurant choices, you know, for a lot of folks, you know, until dining rooms fully start to reopen, you know, the, a brand like Domino's or, you know, somebody like that is just, has less competition, you know, and then also at the same time, you know, what they're offering, you know, that sort of contactless, you know, digital, you know, ordering or pickup or carry out or, of course, you know, the delivery element of it, you know, that's what most people are going straight to. So if you were a brand that was known for that or sort of lived in that space, then to some level, you're suddenly welcoming in now a whole new crop of customers, you know, because that pool of people using digital ordering or delivery or carry out and looking to all those different avenues is now much wider than it was three months ago. So, and do you, you, know, do you think that's going to, is that going to stay or do you think that's something that's going to retract back to pre COVID? Yeah, I think it'll retract to an L to a degree. Um, now how long any of this takes and what that looks like, you know, all of this is such a mystery to us. You know, even Domino's mentioned that yesterday that, they sort of caution that these numbers they're seeing, you know, these kind of mid 20% gains over last year, they're not sure if it's going to be the case, you know, with the next quarter or, or, you know, from month to month or week to week, even because the thing is the dining rooms are starting to reopen now, you know, they're opening in at capacities that are lower, you know, things like that. And then the one kind of great, you know, unknown in all this today is that we, don't really know if, um, you know, customers are going to be eager to go dine out. You know, of course, some are who can't wait to kind of open the doors and rush back into society, but there's going to be still a very strong part of the population, most likely, that remains wary, you know, and might yeah. still use curbside and delivery for months to come, you know, even when they don't have to. So we don't know what that looks like and what that sort of uh, split is actually going to be, you know, what it is right now might be totally different 
next week if say a report comes out you know from officials that says some like you know cases are dropping there's there's just so many different external elements Mm -hmm. to the restaurant um, side of this but my initial kind of feeling on that and what I get from other people is that those brands that are soaring right now are kind of getting that that bump from the growth and off-premise you know service are going to continue to see that for for some period of time you know it's not because like we're talking about it's not going to snap back to pre-covid levels you know if it ever does which we don't know it's not going to be for a little while here because you know, like I said, there are still capacity limits on the dine-in and there are just going to remain a bunch of folks who still kind of look at that experience as being too risky. So, and then the other part of this too, that, you know, I've heard a lot of restaurant, you know, CEOs and executives say is that, you know, one thing about this period, hopefully optimistically speaking is, you know, say like a brand like Texas Roadhouse, who historically was not a large takeout um, operation. You know, they saw a boost in their, you know, outside the four wall business, there was some crazy thing like 575%. And and that, a lot of that is because it bounced off the bottom of essentially nothing. Yeah, so now it's like, the, yeah, one order a week, right. you know, <laughs> percentages look pretty good. <laughs> Right. So, but the, but the question about that now moving forward is when the dine-in service returns, you know, are those people who, you know, look to Texas Roadhouse for takeout and curbside during the pandemic, are they going to say to themselves here and there, you know, maybe I'll get takeout from Texas Roadhouse on Friday because, you know, now they've been introduced to it. They know it exists. They've done it before. They feel comfortable with it. So maybe that's 10, 12 orders a year from a core user you didn't have before. Um, First Watch, who I chatted with last week, had mentioned that too. You know, they were never a big to-go operation because naturally they're a breakfast brunch concept, not a day part that you take out. You know, most of their packaging for to-go was for people who didn't finish their meal. Yes, doggy bag, yep. Um, So they were saying, you know, we kind of expect that side of our business now that we've reinforced it to stay, you know, maybe double, triple what it was pre levels. So, so that's kind of the question, um, you know, that we faced that, that maybe is a positive, hopefully down the road for, for some chains and larger restaurant companies that they keep some of that business, um, you know, at, because the dining is always going to be the anchor of a full service restaurant, you know, so, But if they can get that extra revenue, of course, it's going to be a welcome thing. But we we kind of don't know. (laughs) Well, (laughs) absolutely. I think that's a great point to make is like, we we don't know. And that's why one of the things that we always talk about with our customers um, is, hey, you you need to ask, you need to find out what is your new normal. And what people often misconceive is that there's kind of like this, this film and you step through the film and like, we're in the new normal, but like, that's not how it's going to work. You know, it's going to be an iterative step-by-step process. The restaurant in one County will be different than the restaurant in another County. You know, I was talking this morning with one of our nationwide clients, Tucanos. Uh, they are an all you could eat like a Brazilian, Brazilian grill. And uh, <laughs> they're, they're phenomenal. And, but they, they never did to go or online ordering because there was always an hour and a half wait to get in. Right. And so to add the operational burden of like a to go order would have just been way too much. Um, But in talking to them today, you know, that's something that they're going to keep doing. And that's something that a lot of brands that we're seeing are, are continuing to, they're planning to continue some form of delivery. They're even reconfiguring some of their spaces to allow for that. Um, Right. Yeah. Because previously to go was what? Takeout was pizza and Chinese food, right? And, and that was it. Like what other, recently, yeah. I remember recently there's a company that started um, delivering cookies and it like blew my mind. This was like two years ago. They're like, oh, you have your cookies delivered. I'm like, cookies delivered. I'm like, what? Like it, I couldn't even conceive it. And now it's like, 
well, yeah, it's nine o'clock. I want a cookie. So I ordered it from bed, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Someone put the, put it to me this way the other day that the way delivery was working pre um, pan or I guess even during the pandemic where we are now is, I don't know, I guess, yeah, before the pandemic delivery was really working as though it was like I had my DoorDash restaurants, I had my Uber Eats restaurants, Grubhub, et cetera, and then I had the Chinese and the pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there wasn't much in between that. So what's kind of changed in that process is that, or, you know, over the past couple months is that people will say to themselves now, man, you know, I really miss the Kano's or, you know, whatever my local favorite restaurant is, and they'll pull it up on the website and see if there's to go or you know delivery and so we've seen kind of this this boom in like first party delivery lately you know which is yeah. almost like a old school restaurant thing that kind of fell by the wayside a little bit for multiple reasons in the last you know a couple years but you know that's kind of taken a little bit of a boom from this because you have consumers who are looking to delivery for totally different reasons. You know, we always used to say that people were kind of app loyal more than they were brand loyal. And this was especially true of like millennials and Gen Z and younger generations and people who use the aggregator services to fire up delivery that they would think more like, I want a hamburger more than like, I want to go to Chili's or whatever. Yeah. But now what's changed in the, in the, COVID world is that people are saying to themselves, I want to go to this restaurant that I trust or that I miss or that I want to support. And then they're looking for the delivery or the to go. And now the question for me is, is that going to linger beyond, you know, the dine-in reopenings or some form of new normal? Are those same people going to now look, you know, in their mind to say, I've got options to eat from the same restaurant i always thought i could only dine in this one way and so you yeah. know for me on an advice level not that anyone's asking <laughs> yeah, I, but, i'm uh, asking <laughs> but i i would keep those um channels live you know for the foreseeable future just to kind of see what happens i think you know one thing that um a lot of people have have kind of done is that they've used email groups or loyalty programs to poll, you know, core users to say like, what do you want to see from us as we reopen? Like what safety measures are you comfortable with? Stuff like that, et cetera. So my whole thing is that I wouldn't stop doing that for a few months, you know, as, as you reopen to say, you know, what are we doing right? You know, is there something we could do curbside or whatever it happens to be so you can continue to kind of gain that feedback as, um, as you know, things progress here in this so-called new normal, you know, and, and another element to that too is just, you know, obviously you want to sort of stay in touch with people who have been very difficult to reach, you know, during COVID because you can't see them. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's a new, to me, there's a chance here for kind of a new wave of customer loyalty. Um, and because we were really sort of at a point where this, the whole restaurant world was oversaturated. There were too many places and there really wasn't that much brand loyalty to go around. You know, you were kind of competing for, you know, visits and stuff like that. And you saw this huge wave of, um, or kind of <laughs> surge in loyalty programs and app downloads, you know, Burger King was getting pretty famous for doing these really zany promotions just to get you to sign up for yeah the, for the one penny loyalty. one penny whopper and, right yeah the detour and the, all the you know moldy whopper and all these different things they were doing and, and it's sort of this race for data um to remarket to people because of this whole fact that you know younger consumers were kind of proven to be a little bit flighty for why they were choosing where they were going and so in my view and this may turn out to be inaccurate <laughs> is that, you know, I think this this kind of current COVID landscape and then the days to come is going to provide a, a real opportunity for restaurants to earn trust, you know, from people who will look to them afterward because they'll say, you know, I went to Burger King and the, you know, when I was kind of scared to go out and I had a great experience, it got me out of the house, I fed my family for 
$25. I didn't have to go to the grocery store and none of us got COVID, you know? Yeah. So, so, so that, that type <laughs> that's, of thing to that's, me. That's the new bar, right? right. I, I ate out and I didn't get COVID. Okay. Yeah. I like this place. Well, if you feel, you know, it's true though, because I, I, I went, you know, somewhere recently and I, and I kind of was saying, you know, afterwards, like, well, you know, that was really easy. You know, I just called them when I got there, they brought the food, put it in the trunk. I felt good about it. The food was good. And I, you know, it's, so you kind of leave with a whole different now suddenly set of expectations because everyone isn't doing that. So you just can kind of say, all right, I feel comfortable here. And no one really was saying that, you know, pre-COVID because you were taking for granted all these things. So if you say I had a comfortable dining experience that I appreciated, you know, you're probably going to go back. You know, McDonald's CEO said something like that where people are going to seek out their familiar brands, you know, because they're, they're looking to what makes them comfortable or reminds them of what life was like before this. So if they walk in and see everything they want to see, whatever that might be, and they feel like you did a good job, you might have earned a customer you know, for life. And I don't know that the stakes were that high beforehand. So it's, there's always opportunity in sort of these um, unique scenarios. And I think that's one of them. No, I, I totally agree, Danny. And, uh, you know, I guess in, in looking at this, here are my key takeaways from this conversation. One is first and foremost, we don't know what's going to happen, right? And anyone that tells you otherwise is wrong. Um, and, I, and I think that it's a matter of finding out that iterative process as opposed to looking to any one expert to tell us what exactly it is. Um, two, keep those digital channels live. I love that. You know, don't, don't be so quick to shut them off. See how they play out before you decide if you're going to go back full uh, dine-in, for example. Three, uh, people are starting to think brand first. We don't know how long that's going to stay around, but they're starting to shift. I've seen that from, from my perspective as well. It's like, man, I really want, I really want a five guys burger or I really want a, you know, two Kano's meal. Um, four, I love that idea of polling loyal users. You know, you've got some data, you can see who they are, poll them, ask them about their opinion. And lastly, I love that the new currency is trust. And that is how you need to buy your customers and get your customers back. Love that. Uh, Danny, any, how, how can people find you? How can people follow you? Um, I guess, you know, the two ways really, of course, um, qsrmagazine.com and fsrmagazine.com are two websites. Um, we're updating things daily. You know, we have landing pages for COVID content, but just generally speaking, uh, easy to find stuff on there. But then, of course, LinkedIn is the best place, um, direct one-to-one. -one. Or you could email me at danny at foodnewsmedia.com. Awesome. Well, Danny, I sure do appreciate you coming on here. Some great insights. And today's ovation goes to you for continuing to put out that awesome content for uplifting people, giving them the information they need to keep going and growing. So thanks, Danny. No problem. Thanks again. Glad you're with us today. And thank you. Thank you to the risk takers, the troublemakers, the crazies who are keeping this world clothed and fed. You're the ones who deserve an ovation. Again, this podcast was sponsored by Ovation. To see how we can help you grow your business, go to OvationUp.com. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, remember to give someone in your life an ovation today.